thanks. I appreciate you coming on. That, oh, it's okay. uh, you know, I was looking at your bio, and wow, you've you've had a long, long racing history. Yeah, it's, I start I started racing when I was four. So, wow. Yeah. So then, was your was your like father into it or? No, let's say my yeah my my father liked uh, motorsport, but you know it's not it's not easy to start. It's really expensive, so he never had the the chance to to race. And yeah, he, I think he wanted me to race a lot. So when I was really young, I was like uh, three and a half, something like this. He put me in a go kart, and I don't remember when I started because I was too young. I mean, so <laughs> but yeah, for sure, like everyone, like my dad said at the beginning, I didn't like it so much. But mm. I think because it's, it's normal when you're like when you're like three, four, five, you, you don't understand so much stuff. So I didn't like it a lot. Then when I started to win around when I was seven, eight, because. I started in Switzerland, and in Switzerland you can race only from when you are eight or something. Mm-hmm. So from four to eight, I was just driving around and stuff. At eight, my first racing, racing stuff, let's say, I win, and from there I, I, I wanted to race. Yeah. Wow! And then he, he, your family just helped, like support all your racing, all the way up. Yeah, like luckily my dad uh, founded some sponsor. So, like, in karting, we were able to race like this. But then, yeah, it started to be really expensive because also karting is expensive. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I had, I, had, I had sponsor that helped me. And, uh, yeah, I, I was able to race because I had sponsor. And, and then when, before to go in Formula, luckily Ferrari came. And from there, they, they supported me. Until I left them to go in GT. So, because you were in the the Ferrari Academy, so then they they basically act as your sponsor and they pay for everything. Then, or how does that work? I'm curious. Yeah, I was like a, a Ferrari driver, let's say Ferrari young driver. They were mm-hmm. deciding my my career. Let's say they said like you do Formula Three, you do GP two, you do that, 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 and the way yeah, supporting me like this. And believe in me, like one day maybe possible to to be Formula One for them. Wow, right? Because then, because uh, Charles Leclerc, he he was in the academy, right? Yeah, but I I already left when he came. So. Mm-hmm. But I'm I would imagine you've met some you know pretty pretty important people in the industry uh, being with that program. Yeah, I mean, when when I was there, I was there because Montezemolo and Domenicali wanted me. So I was there because because of them. Yeah, I was in the year with Jules Bianchi, with um, also Sergio Perez sometime. But yeah, it was me and Jules Bianchi, let's say, we were together there. Jules was a bit further in the program because he was older than me. So he was mm-hmm. already in GP2 Formula 1 and me I was still in Formula A, Barto Formula 3. But yeah, it was me and him, and we were growing together. And uh, then, yeah, when the new Ferrari guys came, like Arriva Bene, Marchione, we didn't like each other. They didn't believe in me as much as the old bosses. So mm-hmm. I, if I had to, to decide if continue to pay GP2 and try to win Formula 1, that was impossible because I never had like 10 million to to race in Formula One. Mm, so right. at, at the end, I decided to be a professional driver and I I decided to shift in GT with Mercedes and yeah, I think it was the best decision for me. Yeah, and that's what it seems like, which is really unfortunate for the sport, is even if you have you know the talent just to be in Formula One, you have to start out with that money and hopefully you can become you know a paid driver, but I mean, like you said, it's. I mean, how much to start out for your first year? You mean in uh, when in when in, karting or GP two? In Formula One. But I think, like no one knows, but everyone knows. But at the end, I think if someone with eight, ten million like this, it's okay. 
<laughs> even if even if you're the GP2 champion, you know, you still have to come in with that money. Let's say like, I don't know. I mean, Charles, no, but Charles had the, yeah. the right manager behind. And I mean, it's a, a different situation for him. But normally, yeah, also, you know, if you don't win the rookie sesh, the rookie year in GP2, then for sure they ask you a ten million because every team needs money. So attend or you start in a team because maybe Ferrari wanted you in Formula One, so you go in Sauber and Ferrari mm-hmm. maybe they give a discount in the engine, like five million discount for the engine. It's still mm-hmm. y- you're not paying, but somehow the money is is coming to the team. So at the end, I think like somehow you you have to bring money and that's yeah and then the other thing too is the turnover you know can be so high you can maybe try to come up with that money but you might only be there for a year or two and then be replaced suddenly you know and that's why that's why it seems like yeah gt racing is so popular and is bringing so many just amazing drivers because it's more of a career is that right yeah i mean also in gt like 90% 90% of the people are paying at the end, let's say the factory driver are not many at the end because now like everyone is starting to see that Formula 1 is really expensive so mm-hmm. they try to, to go in GT so now there are many 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 drivers in GT that wants to be paid and and it's not easy because there are many many drivers and for sure like there is many good drivers that they are Formula One and and they are not in Formula One, so the level in uh, in GT is really high. Yes. And and so with GT, uh, from when I had talked to David Peril, I think he had said typically like a silver you can kind of break even and drive for free, and then gold and platinum you get paid. Is that right, or how's it work? Nice. I think you know like it's different, I suppose, for everyone. It, if you're paying for race, you don't say it because it's yeah. a bit bad. At the end, let's right. say platinum driver, they are factory. So they, they don't pay like me, Maro Engel, for Audi, Dries Van Dorn, you know, guys like this. Normally, if you're platinum, it means you have been in maybe Formula 1 or you won some championship important, so you're paid. Gold, I think, is is a difficult rating because gold means or you're like really good as a platinum level or gold you can be maybe as bad as a silver so gold mm. let's say normally gold are paying a bit because it's is a difficult situation silver i think is is like david said at the end silver is is really big because there is really bad silver and really good silver that are as fast as a platinum. Mm-hmm. So then there is maybe a silver, a silver like really rich that is paying all the car, and you need mm-hmm. a silver good, and the, the driver is paying for the good silver. So let's say it's work like this, but it's, it's, it's quite complicated. At, at the end, 90% of the driver are bringing sponsor, let's say. It's like right. This. And that, and that's why, like personal branding, um, and things like that are so important. Because, I mean, that's that is your business to have enough of a following to attract sponsors and and kind of create relationships um, to help you know take them on. Because I get a lot of questions of people that want to get started, and um, they're like, "Well, how do I how do I adjust my pitch?" And it seems like, well you should really be trying to develop relationships rather than pitch. Um, how, what kind of recommend? like, how would you, how would you give advice on getting sponsorships? I think first of all, don't, don't be a racing driver. If there is football, <laughs> that is much better. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's not easy because for sure it depends a lot in which country you're born because some country has more money than other, like for example in Italy is a really bad situation because there is no money, so it's it's quite complicated. You can see with Monza, with 
how many Italian drivers there are around this. It's quite mm-hmm. bad, so it depends from where you're from. Let's say Brazil, maybe it's easier. About sponsor, then I think it's no one give you something for free. It's always mm-hmm. like the sponsor will give you something, but they will want back something one day. Mm-hmm. I think also the right manager is important. You must be also, I don't know what to say, but, you know, like realistic about yourself. Because if you're like good, you must like be really good because the world is really big and there are many good drivers. I see many, many fathers that are pushing the the child, you know, like pushing, you're good, you're good, but at the end, they are not enough good. I mean, you must be realistic and at the end, mm-hmm. like, of course, doing what you like, but if you cannot be really quick at the end, why continue to try, 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 waste money, you know? At the end, mm-hmm. like, if you're realistic, you also suffer less because one day the reality will come and maybe it's too late to do also all this stuff. So, I mean, for sponsor, you attend is all, you know, you know, someone that can bring you to this guy, can give you this, but you need to give this. It's, it's not easy at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, and that's one thing where I wonder, well, at what point, maybe in the future, do fathers start um, helping their kids become a professional sim racer because the, the cost is a lot lower? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know what to say, but it's, it's complicated because at the end, I, I like the sim racer stuff, but it's not like r- real racing, you know, like mm-hmm. I never seen a, a really quick, you know, because I'm into it a bit. And when I speak with the other sim racer, they, they say like, yeah, we drive before a race we we have to train two three weeks to be ready to do that to be the world challenge stuff blah blah us before a race we just do free practice one and free practice two because right. there is not enough practice i mean at the end it's different because there is the, the physical stress the you know the pressure like the scared of crash to go to the limit it's not like being in a simulator for sure, like at least for me, the simulator in this really helpful. Maybe more for the engineer because if it's a right tool, they can do a baseline for the real track that you go there and you know already more or less the setup. And for mm-hmm. a driver, if needs to learn the track, but I never seen a real simulator driver then going on track and being quick. Also, the G- uh, GT Sport guy, like uh, all the guy that won the GT Sport stuff. Right. In the past, they never did super great in in racing. I mean, at then, like maybe the only one is Jan Madenburg and the Lucas Ordenets that are doing something, but they never won big championship, big race. I mean, they are good, but I think if you're really talented, you you don't need to come from sim racing. Somehow, someone will see you. Well, and, and that's also, I mean these sim racers they've maybe been doing it you know a a lot the last couple years but then there's people like you that have been doing it since they're three years old you know so uh, how are they supposed to compete (laughs) especially when it there's so much so many different um you know so many different uh like you say physical and uh like um you know it's just it'll, it'll it'll always be different but uh, but yeah, that's one thing that I mean it's definitely gaining in popularity. But even for you, like uh, you know, in practice, they want to typically give the practice to the AM drivers, so you only get you know a little bit of practice, don't you? Yeah, like for example, me before the I mean me, I'm racing with in the pro category, so my teammate is a pro. But it's the first year in Mercedes, so it needs a bit more time than me. The last time mm-hmm. uh, bef- in Brenzach this weekend, before Quali, I did only three laps. Like, it was one mm-hmm. hour of practice, like half an hour and one hour 30, something like this. I did three laps and then straight to Quali, and he, he did all the rest. 
I want to see like how many in sim race in sim racing they they do only to lap like before a session, you know. Right. It's dif it's different. They like you know the private tests, all this stuff in in reality. Also in reality, more you drive, better it is. But it's expensive and it's private. Like it's forbidden also to test. In sim racing, you can do maybe if you have a race Sunday, you can do two thousand laps like before the race. And <laughs> right. This is really different because you we don't have this in reality. Or if you have this, if you're really rich. So then I was watching, I was also looking at your bio. You had done some testing in a Formula E. Yes. How'd that go? So, I mean, I, I'm curious as kind of, you know, what what's it like compared to a GP2 car? Um, and what's kind of your opinion on that? I mean, a 10 Formula E is, is still a race car. It has four tires, so a 10 is a car. And you need to push to go to go quick. It's different. I mean, it's difficult to compare with other cars because the tracks are are different. So it's difficult to compare. But for sure, the car is growing every year. The championship is getting bigger and bigger. They have all the brands there. So I think in in five ten years will not be the new Formula One. But because Formula One will stay forever, but will be an alternative, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's it's really interesting. It's not easy to drive on braking; the car is really nervous. But it's I mean it's it's quick, has a lot of um, torques right away, and it's not easy at all to go close to the wall with a car that at end has not slick tires, so it's really sliding around, and it's not easy. Yeah. I wonder, so is there a reason why they don't use, like, race tires? Or, I mean, uh, like, slicks? Well, actually, I don't know. I, I never asked. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I've always thought that was odd because they have, you know, all these all this downforce and then they're using, like, a street tire. But it just seems because, weird. I mean, the car is, is still is not quick now. Like, you know, it, they just started, so the technology should develop. And now, like... Everyone knows if they put the Formula E in a normal circuit, the car is low, but because it's a new stuff, it's a new thing. So right. they need to get better and better. And uh, I see now the combination they are doing like this is okay. In, in the future, when they, they have more power, more more stuff, they will put slick for sure. Do you, do you think the street tracks that they race on, do you think that, I mean, is it just meant to be different or um, would you like to see them? I'd like to see them on like a, you know, proper circuit. I think that'd be more fun to watch for me at least. Yeah, I think for sure in the future they will they will go also in a circuit, like a normal circuit. But I think like this is also like re really nice for the fans. They're always close to, to the mm -hmm. people. But for sure, like if they want to get even bigger, they 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 have to go see the normal circuit one day, but for sure they will. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it, and more and more um, factory teams are coming in too. Yeah, everyone is there. Like if you say, "I'm on factor," they're there. So it's it's quite huge. Yeah. So, um, I guess for you, would you want to stick with GT? Or I mean, what kind of uh, what kind of goals do you have for the future? I mean, and now I am a Mercedes driver, so I'm here and I'm doing what what they're asking me to do, and I'm happy to do that. And in the future, we'll see. I mean, I'm I'm still relatively young. I'm 24, so I want to win all the big races possible. So I don't know if one day mm -hmm. I will be in Formula E or whatever, but. I mean, doing what I like. I'm a professional driver, and this is important. And I'm anyway with a really big brand like Mercedes MG, so I cannot complain. Right? Yeah. I mean, they're they're pretty they're pretty uh, easily the most successful racing team out there right now. So yeah, I mean, Mercedes so is will always stay in racing, so it's it's a really good position to stay. Mm hmm. So is it, uh, would you ever want to be in like the World Endurance Championship? Because I've wondered why Mercedes doesn't participate in that. 
but I don't know. I mean, a tent to work now is not really a a big big stuff. I think to work now is only mainly the twenty four hour of Le Mans. All mm-hmm. the rest of the end, you know, is the GT class is going quite down. LMP1 is is nothing at the end. So I don't know what will happen there in the future. I think now it's the GT3 is is the way to go because the car is not not so expensive to buy and then they can do the championship with relatively low money compared to GT and and it's is a ten the GT is like a GT three more expensive. Nothing more right. and we'll see one day, but for sure now GT three is is a better better stuff for the future and for the team is it's easier to handle the budget. Yeah, that's what it seems because you've got like more of the, you know, continental series, you know, like say IMSA or Blanc Pan where the costs are lower and there's so much more competition. There's so many more teams. I mean, they're like, it's just, uh, you know, compared to going into a different, you know, like in the World Endurance Championship, you're all over the place. The costs, yeah, I, I mean, mean. Then we have like, we have the intercontinental, I mean, IMSA is not a SRO championship because I'm doing the SRO championship. We have yet a blend pain, sprint and endurance. And then we have the mm-hmm. Intercontinental GT Challenge. And the Intercontinental is, is really nice. I mean, we have Baturs, Laguna, Suzuka, Spa, and Kilayami. So, I mean, it's really a, a nice championship. And I don't know, m- m- maybe one day the GT3 will allow to do Le Mans. I mean, I don't know. And I think if the GT3 will allow to be Le Mans, then the GT3 is, is, yeah, is completely over GT. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would I would say so too cuz I mean I've heard that it, like say for Lamar for the GTE it's you know 500,000 for the race is that right? I mean it's like just uh, I have no idea GTE I mean, yeah. I never been into into it. So. Yeah. But still, I mean cuz I mean for, yeah, for sure if it's you more expensive because the race like is quite far the race then the car costs more so it's all more expensive. Right. So if if I wanted to be, you know, a gentleman driver um, in in a GT, what's that usually, I mean, a guesstimate per year? What, what What's that kind of cost if you wanted to pay? Like the blank pain, sprint endurance, I'm, I don't know, so precise, but like per car is around 1 million to sprint and endurance. Mm-hmm. But then you have to de- like divide per driver or only one driver is paying. I mean, if you are like three amateur, like rich and they want to race together, it's more or mm-hmm. less 300,000 per person. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot, but it's not a lot because the tender is a 24 hour spa, sprint is 10 races, then there is endurance that is five races, quite long races. I mean, a tent. Right. The endurance is, is better than formula, I think, because you can split the, the budget be, like between drivers compared. Like GP2 is 1 million point five, but it's only one driver. <laughs> in, right. in, in GT at end, it's like overall it's expensive, let's say, but you can divide per you know, driver. Maybe one driver can pay more, the other less, but at end is, is more affordable, let's say. But right. for sure you also need money. I mean, if you're an amateur, you want to do GT3, you must be rich for sure. So, I mean, having a, a pretty long career already, only being 24, what uh, what kind of failures have you had that you had to overcome? Oh, yeah, and, you know, you you have always the high moment, the low moment, for sure. Like not being in Formula One, it's it's quite. It's, I mean, I'm sad. I I believe to be to be in Formula One and. I was always really close to it, so mm-hmm. not to be in Formula One is is a yeah is a pity for me. But but then luckily I I turned this this stuff quite quite nicely, and now I'm in a good position. But I mean, at the end you can have a bad race, a good race, but at the end it's for everyone like this. You 
I don't know, I mean, I'm racing for 20 years already, so I, I don't remember so well the low moment, but let's say all the GP2 years, they were quite low, and all the rest were, were quite high, and at the end, you, you must always believe in yourself, and as I said, being like realistic, I know what, what I can do, so also when I had a bad race, I always said like, fuck, I can do it, so fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> right and so you're you're based out of italy is that right no i live in lugano in switzerland oh okay yeah but i'm italian okay very cool so i mean uh i guess just uh uh, i mean you you've getting more into sim racing then have you do you have like your own rig and things like that yeah i have like uh i started let's say it is like I was playing PlayStation before and with the steering wheel and everything. After, you know, I, I said, like, uh, I want to, you know, to, to do a bit serious. So, you know, I normally I'm doing a racing, let's say. I have a good computer with uh, NVIDIA 2018 Ti. I have a mm-hmm. drink drive. I have a, a Formula One steering wheel, triple monitor. So I'm quite, quite into it, but for sure not having so much time because I'm doing around 20, 25 races per year. Yeah. I don't have so much time for, for the racing, but when I'm at home, I, I drive with friends and I start to grow a bit also now on a racing. Now I'm around 4,000 I rating. So slowly, slowly I'm, I'm getting into the rhythm and I mean, it's, it's nice to, I don't take it so seriously because, you know, it's always hard when some drivers, some sim driver beats you and then they start to say that they can drive, blah, blah, blah. So it's a bit annoying for me. So I prefer yeah. to drive, you know, with friends, with, with other drivers. We do, I do some racing, like some race, but always with people I know. So, I mean, I'm doing for fun, but of course I don't want to be slow. So I try also to be quick there. Yeah, I mean it is pretty competitive, especially the the GT actually is much more popular than um, single seaters. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's true. Like, but but, but the thing because it's easier. Like you know when you're driving a racing with right. a, a hybrid Formula One or the LMP One, you have a lot to do with cars with uh, hybrid stuff. I think GTs or GT threes. It's much easier. You just need a good setup and then drive. Right. I suppose, yeah. For more of like the hobby person, it is a lot easier. Yeah. But have you ever done any of like the endurance races on iRacing? This year, no, because then I didn't have time. But last year, we yeah. did the, the 12 hour of Batours. I did. It was the weekend after my Batours. So it was back to back races. And, mm-hmm. but, like for fun, you know, with, in a really bad split. And I did this year with a Jim Williams guy. I did uh, also Batters at 12 hours. And we were the second split, so it was a bit more serious. And we finished fourth, I think. But I'm not, I'm quick, but not that quick compared to the super fast guys. So it's, I mean, right. I also don't want to go there because I know I will be not quick like them. So, but, but, but yeah, it's fun. So what is uh what's your favorite track? Would you say? All the old style track, you know. I I like the track where there is no like runoff area where if you do a mistake you crash. You know, mm-hmm. like track where you can do a mistake, it's easy because everyone can do it. Where you know if you crash you do a mistake you crash, it's it's nicer. Like I like, you know, like Macau, Zandvoort. Nosh Life, uh, Mugello, Imola, Silverson, Presage. Okay, Silverson now they they a bit destroying this track with all the of idea, but still is a right. good track. So I mean all the old style track, I I really love it, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's one thing that because then it just it gets abused too. Yeah, because I mean at the end, like you know, like if you do for example now Puan in Spa. Like one day to go into the limit, uh, like in the past was difficult because 
if you were doing a mistake, you were in the gravel and the session was finished. Now you know, like, you if you also overdrive and you go completely white, you still have margin. So it's, it, it's a bit of pity this because the level is, is getting higher, but like this is getting easier. So then the gap are smaller, but because it's easier, because to go to the limit now is not hard, like, as in the past. So that's one thing that I feel, I'm not sure if, if, cause when I'm on iRacing, um, it, I feel like I'll practice, you know, cause I, I kind of do it like you. I really, I don't try to be competitive. Um, I kind of have my own business that I'm trying to run. So I really don't have a whole lot of time anyway, but I'll, I'll practice during the week. I'll feel like I'll get, you know, at the limit and I'll put in, you know, what I feel like is like my best lap. And then I'll be like two seconds off. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, that's some, I, I wonder, I'm really trying to work on, um, like trail breaking. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a total amateur. So yeah, I, th I feel like that is really where the speed comes from. Would you say? Yeah. I mean, I think this is like, yeah, it's, you need to be fast on entry, fast on mid, and fast in ex and fast in exit. <laughs> and then you're quick. Yeah, enough. right. Or to like, <laughs> let's say, if you can entry quick in the corner and prepare and place well the car for the exit, this is the way to go, I think, because then, you know, it depends also the corner. If you have a, a small straight after, maybe you can sacrifice your exit, but for sure, like, the trail braking, you, you can drive the down for a bit of the car and you can place better the car if you can do it well. This is for sure. Mm -hmm. Cause a, a track like, uh, say Monza, right. Where, um, kind of carrying your speed in that momentum through the whole track is, is important, but yeah, that's one thing where I, I kind of think, I think I need to work on being able to more. Cause what I'll, what I typically do, what I found is like, I'll try to do like threshold breaking into a corner and then, um, and then kind of, so, you know, I, I guess I'll break as hard as I can. I'll go into it and then try to, you know, power out. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I think, yeah, I think that usually overslows me maybe, but I mean, obviously, every every corner and every track is different. But yeah, also every car. I mean, also in GT three, some car. If you overdrive, it's really bad. If you don't overdrive, it's really bad. I mean, it depends always the car. I mean, some car can switch your driving style better or worse. It's mm. it's, it's not so easy as as every, as as maybe many people can think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess actually, I would say I overdrive. Yeah, because I usually, I usually try to overdrive and then I'll miss the apex a lot. Yeah. I, I I catch myself doing that. I mean, I'm not, and that's, I mean, especially as a, you know, a kind of a, I can only do a couple hours per week. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of uh, fun to see. You know, well, maybe over time I'll improve, but <laughs> it'll always be kind of a hobby. Yeah, yeah. Then for them is a work almost, so for sure they're better than us. Right. And I mean, are you, are you kind of, cause I've, I've talked to some racing teams in the past about, you know, seeing if they'd be interested in purchasing a simulator and, um, the, 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 per, the manager that I talked to, he's like, well, honestly, he's like, our, our drivers, they're good enough that they don't really need or use a simulator. They just go to the track and, you know, do their job. What what do you think about that? Even like something like like uh, like Hamilton says that he he doesn't you know he doesn't use any time in the simulator. Um, I guess maybe it's a little different for everybody. But do you do you like to um, kind of do a lot of research and study and and you know get simulator lap times in before a race or how do you prepare? Well, at this you know depends driver by driver and attend you know driver to Hamilton that they have racing in Formula 1 by a long time. Every year, more or less, it's the same, so they don't need simulator. And in Formula 1, you have a lot of free products, so you can, you know, you can, you can test on track, attend also me, I drive simulator, not so much for, for the race attend, but because I, I like it and, and doing attend, 
it's useful, but if you're not a truck and you've been there a few times, it's not mandatory, let's say. Right. It, it, you know you know your breaking points, you know, and you're mostly yeah, just trying to yeah, get a feel. Yeah, it's, it's the same. I mean, you can see an onboard in YouTube or my onboard from next the year before, and more or less you see the breaking point. But also breaking point depends. Some driver, they need, like, the breaking point Clearly, they need to see the board. Me, I'm a driver. I I don't need the board. I break more like the instinct. You know, I I know where to break and I break. This depends driver by driver. It's a bit like the track walk. Some driver doing, some driver they don't do. Right. And do you go and um, look at your like telemetry and like your um, kind of your data acqu- acquisition? Or is that kind of more just for the engineers or are the drivers pretty involved with that too? I'm, I'm not doing a lot. <laughs> but yeah. Some drivers, they do more, some drivers do less. I, I don't know, I'm not attend. You know, when, if I feel in some corner I'm a bit slow, I, can, I, I look at it, but normally you don't need a telemetry when you drive if you're realistic at yourself because, you know, you, you feel where you're slow when you're quick. So I, I looked at telemetry only for maybe a confirmation of what I need. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose because you have you have a a better sense for your speed, so yeah. you, you really don't have to you don't have to know if you're going too slow or fast. You can feel yeah. that. Yeah, that makes sense. That's cool. So then, uh, I'm sure you kind of uh, keep up on F1. Who, not much uh, but yeah i watched oh yeah, yeah. I, it's a bit boring. Would, would, yeah you know that's that everyone was kind of hoping you know this year would be different but kind of more of the same yeah even worse maybe <laughs> yeah yeah wait well, i think i'm not sure if they're just trying to you know come up with the story or what but i've i've always been i was always a ferrari fan and i've been a seb fan but gosh, this last couple of years, I don't know, not as much anymore. And I've also come to respect Hamilton a lot more because, I mean, even though Mercedes is clearly the powerhouse, the fact that he almost never makes a mistake, and if he does, he can come back from it. You know, it's I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I tend to, you know, if, if Formula One is doing a lot of the car, but I mean, I don't want to, to speak bad about drivers, but I always thought, like, Fettel is really good, but he's not that good as as everyone can see. Maybe, I mean, he, he won in the Red Bull beating Weber. That's it, because the car was much better. And at the end, you know, it's, it's difficult to say if a driver is really quick or not really quick, but I think Ferrari now with Charles, they 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 can do really well because I... I think Charles is really good driver. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm I'm actually rooting for Charles too. Yeah, I think uh, he seems like a he seems. I mean, I guess maybe it's just the underdog, you know. But he also seems just so talented and. Oh, um, he's, he's really good. Yeah. Hmm. And so, because he so he came from the Ferrari Academy too. Yes. And so then, uh, I guess like. Would would you would you then want to ever become like a for I mean is that kind of do you have a soft spot for them or is it just kind of they're just a, another team? Like, would you ever want to be a factory driver for them? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, now I'm in MG, but if one day I have the chance, maybe I mean, you never know what happened. If GTA will grow again and Ferrari will call me, I mean, I'm not mad at them or something and. You never know what happy life, but you know, being Italian for sure, Ferrari is Ferrari, so you never know right. what happened. Right. Yeah, that's. I guess they always talk about, um, you know, the the Tifosi at the yeah. Italian GP. You know, in the the how everyone goes on the track afterwards, and it just looks crazy. Yeah. Have you ever gone um, to to the Italian GP? 
but when I was doing GP2, I was there, so yeah. Okay. Oh, I suppose, yeah. yeah. I don't like it so much. It's too, I mean, I always say the Monza is the worst one because the organization is really bad and could be much better. And I'm not so much into, you know, a home race or whatever. When you win, it's always 25 points. So right. it's not because it's my home race to give me more points. <laughs> and when you're on track yeah. anyway, many drivers can say, yes, I feel, you know, the fans, but I'm not like this. When you drive, you drive and that's it. Right. I actually kind of like Imola better, anyway. What, sorry? I, I like uh, actually Imola better than Monza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imola is much better, yeah. At yeah. The, I mean, at the end, Monza, with now the parabolic like this, is not so hard anymore. And, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's all straight, but Imola is Imola. Also, Mugello is better, but for Formula 1, will, will be really a boring race. But Imola is really nice. It's one of the best, yeah. Right. Yeah, I wonder why they don't bring Formula One back there. Well, I think for money reason, as always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I suppose. Course. But it seems like the uh, the new ownership they're doing a good job with social media and stuff like that. But yeah, I think that's that the hard thing about the sport is. It's not always an even playing field, it seems, which is difficult. But but GT does a better job. Yeah, then, you know, you know, it's, you know, F one is F one, and it's the quickest car in the world, blah blah blah. But at the end, is how much the, I wonder what... how much the fan loves to watch the racing, you know. You're right. Like, if you ask to 10 person, like, during Formula 1 race, if they fell asleep, seven will say yes. Or, like, <laughs> or like many, yeah. they, they, like, will say, I watch only the start, or I hope about a crash, because with a crash, there is safety car, and it's not racing like this. Why you you want a crash only for the show? Because then with a the safety car, stuff can change. No. In GT, we don't need this because we we are passing, we do stuff, and it's also if it's endurance race at end when you do the twenty four hour, it's like a sprint race because you do like always quality almost. Right. I wonder what would happen if rather than you know trying to change the aerodynamics and introducing DRS, they just did a balance of performance. I wonder if that would kill it or if it would make it more but more popular. You know, the problem, like, if you want the car quick, you need downforce. And if the car is quick, you cannot overtake. This, I mean, they will never find a solution to make, to keep the car quick and fun to watch the race. It's like, it's physics, you know, like, you cannot change it. But I mean, but I mean, doing like a, a balance of performance, like, you know, they do in GT where, you know, they can change boost and things like that. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I think Formula One, you know, is like the one who's building the best car is winning. I don't think they yeah. can work in F1. Like Ferrari right. will leave after one day if they do like this. Right. Yeah, especially, but then the, the costs just balloon out of control. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> it's like DTM. It's like, yeah. I don't see why DTM is costing that much. That is almost a GT3 car. Right. Yeah, because that's one. I've actually, I've, I've really uh, never kept up very closely with DTM. But I mean, it is I mean, um, really interesting What's because they have so much more DTM. They have so much more downforce than just a regular GT. Not that much. Like oh, really. Should... I mean, like for sure, yes, but if you remove the BOP to, to our car and you give us the same tires, we are not so far. We are already three, four seconds away, not that much. Hmm. One thing about DTM, they're, they, I feel like their uh, they're tracks and their stadium seating, it's always, it, it always seems like it's really good for the fans too. It's, it's like easier to watch. 
Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they always want like a lot of people. So maybe they do the short version of the track because they are scared. Like they cannot put all the people into it. Oh yeah, I suppose. But yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing I, I would like to follow a little bit more closely, but it's hard to, it's hard to find any uh, coverage actually over here of DTM, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's almost a German championship. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that, uh, I mean, uh, I appreciate you coming on. It uh, It's pretty cool having, you know, someone with as much experience and yeah, as a factory really driver. Cool. So. <laughs> so what are you looking forward to this year then? But the... The intercontinental season started quite well. We finished third in Batur, second in Laguna, and we are leading the, the championship, so it's really good there. The European season in Blank Pain was a bit, yeah, a bit shit at the beginning. Monza, we were fourth, we had to retire the car because of broken suspension. Mm-hmm. In Brenzach, we were second, we broke the clutch. I mean, we've been quite unlucky in the year, but. But I mean, at the end, it's, it's more, you know, about 24 hours spa, 24 hours on North Life, the big race. So we will see when we, uh, when we arrive there, where we are. Yeah, that's one race I'd like to go to, uh, North Life, yeah. a 24 hour. One of these days, I'll come, I'll come visit. <laughs> oh, it's nice. It's, it's like, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. I, uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but, um, do you have anything you'd want to plug, you know, where can people find you? Instagram, Twitter, like, I mean, everyone in this world says Instagram. So. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. I thank you.